Hi everyone, Leticia here again with Made with Love by Glamma, where everything here is made with love. Um, today's tutorial is going to be a very basic tutorial. I think I'm going to make a series of basic tutorials and this one will teach you how to chain and how to single crochet. And the reason I'm making this very basic tutorial is because a lady in my Facebook group page um, was asking, I believe she was asking how to do a double crochet and that got me to thinking that maybe I should do a series of basic stitches, chain, single crochet, how to half double crochet, how to double crochet, how to triple crochet. Some people say treble, some people say triple. I say triple. Um, if someone out there can tell me um, why some say treble and some say triple, I'd love to know. Leave it on a comment. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, for this video though, it's just gonna be the chain and the single crochet and you can practice on that. Um, and since I don't want you to do all that work for nothing, I figured you could make a coaster, just a very basic coaster. And these, this is using single crochets. So this is, I believe, 17 stitches, which when you're, when you make your first row, it ends up being 16. I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute if that's confusing to you. But my main point is that I want you to make a coaster. That way you don't have to unravel your work and all that was for nothing. <laughs> you'll actually make something with your very first tutorial. Yay! <laughs> okay, so this was one of my very first things that I made. Um, I keep this up in my craft room and I use it for my lemonade or my tea or whatever I'm drinking, my soda. Um, so anyway, I'm going to teach you how to do just a basic square of single crochets, okay? So you'll need the hook, like I said. You'll need a pair of scissors. And you'll need a uh, yarn needle to weave in your tail later. And if any of y'all have a hard time seeing like I do sometimes, you can use a needle threader. And I use a row counter just because I don't like have to go back and keep counting. It's kind of tedious. If you're crocheting and someone talks to you, then you're like, Ugh, you have to go start all over again and count how many rows you've done. So I use a row counter and I got this one on eBay. Um, because it's pink and I couldn't find a pink one anywhere else. They sell these at um, Joann's and I believe they sell it at Walmart and I'm sure other other craft stores but um, I got this one on eBay because I wanted it pink. <laughs> okay so go and get your supplies ready and we'll get started in just a second. Okay, now that you've got all your supplies ready, we can get started here in a second. Um, I don't believe I told you the name of the hook that I'm using, the size hook I'm using. I'm using an H hook. And you'll hear some people say a 5.0 millimeter. And when I first started, I was like, huh, what's that? What size do I get? So 5.0 millimeter is usually um, the European way of saying it and H is the American way. So I just always call it an H hook, G hook, F hook, whatever. I So this is my H hook. You can buy these at Walmart too with these nice little um, um, soft grips. And I wanted to show you something. Um, I found this picture and I sent this picture to the lady in my Facebook group page just to see if it would help her. Um, this tells you all the different basic stitches. Whoops. And it starts off with a slip stitch. I'm not going to show that one today. I'm going to start with a single crochet. Because um, you really can't make a, a lot of some, you can't make something with just using slip stitches. I'm sure you can, but I'm not going to do that. I'll show you a slip stitch later. Today we're going to learn the single crochet. So these are the names of some of the basic ones. You've got slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, triple crochet and double triple crochet and these numbers down here and that abbreviation means chain so to make a slip stitch you don't chain anything and to make a single crochet you would chain one chain two for a half double chain three for a double chain four chain five and over here gives you an idea of what I'm talking about when I say chain this is a chain and you're gonna learn this today so for a single crochet, like I said, that's what one chain looks like. For a half double, you would make two. For a 
double crochet you would make three one two well yeah three i'm sorry and for a treble you would make four and for a double triple crochet you would make five chains okay so today we're going to learn this one we're going to learn how to chain and we're going to learn how to single crochet so i just wanted to show that share that with you because i'm a visual learner so if there's any visual learners out there here you go this is what we'll be doing throughout the whole basic series that i'm going to be doing okay so let's go ahead and get started normally if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that i normally tell the top of the nail polish color that i'm wearing just because i i think it's kind of fun to know what people what nail polish color everyone's wearing since that's all i'll be looking at when i watch videos is their hands so sometimes i wonder oh i wonder what color that is that's pretty so i thought with my videos i'll just at the top of every video tell everyone the color that i'm wearing and this one is just a very um, inexpensive wet and wild um, crystallic and it's number 471 so in case you were wondering <laughs> that's the name of the polish i'm wearing and you have to excuse my hands today because my nail broke um, saturday when i was doing a craft show so i usually don't cut my nails until two breaks so i'll live with it until the second one breaks and then i'll trim them all down so okay let's get started let's get your yarn that you chose I'm using a pink. That's no, uh, it's no wonder because it's my favorite color like I keep on saying, reiterating. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with a slip knot. And that's how you start every project off, normally with a slip knot. Um, so to make a slip knot, you take your yarn, you wrap it around, I wrap it around two fingers. And I bring this yarn to the back of that and I grab it with my hook and then you just gently pull don't pull it don't pull it down too tight because then you won't be able to get your stitches in there so just um, make it tight and whoops I'm pulling the wrong one make it tight enough where it still kind of slides around on your hook okay so you're gonna learn um, what's comfortable for you as to how to hold the yarn I hold it like this I put my index finger through there and I wrap it through I wrap it um, under my two middle fingers and then I have it over my my pinky like that so that's how I use it and you don't want to hold it too far because then it's hard to work you want to kind of hold it up here where it's a little bit tight but not too tight and then you can either hold your hook like you're using a pencil or you can hold it like this like maybe you're stirring a pot you know a pot of beans or a pot of soup or something um i do it both ways just because i don't want to get carpal tunnel so i use it two different ways so that my fingers don't get too tired so anyway let's get started now that you learned your slip knot we're gonna chain so in order to chain you're going to grab some yarn that's called yarning over and you don't want to leave your hook like that you want to grab it and then turn it to the side so that it doesn't fall off your so the yarn doesn't fall off your hook and then you're going to pull it through that loop of the slip knot that you made and that's a chain believe it or not see it looks like a little v and you just keep doing that you yarn over pull it through that loop and there's another chain there's two chains one two okay so we're going to do that for 17 chains okay so that's two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and 17 okay and earlier when I said that we start off with 17 stitches I meant 17 chains um, and that eventually you end up with only <clears throat> 16 stitches and the reason is is because you made 17 chains and that's your 17th whoops I'm not even in the camera you made your 17th one here's the loop on the hook but that V right under that loop is is your very um, first chain or your 17th chain well when you make a single crochet you're not going to go into the 17th one you're going to go into the 16th one which is basically if you're going this way it's the second one first second 
So we're going to go into that. We're going to just go on the top part of the V. See, now you got your V. We're not going to use both sides of the V. We're only going to go into the top part of the V. We're going to yarn over again, and we're going to pull it through that loop. Let me do that again. Okay, so there's my first chain. There's my second one. We're going to go into the second one, and now you've got two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, and you're going to go through both loops. And now you're going, I almost did a half double crochet. Now you're going to go into the next stitch, the top part of that stitch, yarn over, and go through. Go to the next one. Don't accidentally put your, your hook back into that one. That's what I did when I was a beginner. I'd get confused because I basically taught myself. I didn't um, I didn't really watch YouTube tutorials. Um, I've watched YouTube tutorials to learn how to make other stuff like bikinis and dresses and stuff like that. But when I was first learning the basics, I was learning off of a little book. And so I sometimes would get confused and I would go into that stitch that I just made because it was, I'm like, hey, that's a big hole. I'll stick it in there. <laughs> which is kind of silly but so don't don't go into that one go into this one that hasn't been worked yet there's your two loops yarn over pull it through and go ahead and do that all the way till you get to the end if you get lost or forget then just use the rewind button and watch it again okay so meet me when you get to the end of your row okay and I'll tell you what to do after that Okay, so now you're probably near the end of your row or you're already at the end and you're waiting for me. I left my last stitch to do on camera with you so I can show you what to do next. So there's my last stitch. Um, also, another thing I used to get confused about when I was first learning is sometimes I would, um, I would do this one. I would do my last stitch and then I would think, but wait a minute, that kind of looks like a stitch and I would force my needle into my hook into that and that's not right that's the slip knot that you made so this might sound really really basic but the reason I'm going into that much detail is because those are things that used to confuse me when I was a beginner so I don't want y'all to be confused okay so if, if you already know that then just ignore it but if not you know that was something that I would have appreciated someone telling me when I was first learning Okay, so you've already done your last stitch, and now let's go back and I'll show you what I was talking about earlier. In order to count stitches, you count V's. You see how like the, there's your V's again. So you count the V's or the stitches. One, two, three. Uh oh, my cat's getting into the blinds. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16. So there's 16 stitches even though we made 17 chains. And that's because like I told you before, we didn't go into that very, oops, my cat is messing up my blind so he's making my hands dark. We didn't go into that very first um, um, chain, we went into the second one. So I'm gonna turn the camera off so I can get this cat away from the blinds. Okay, we took care of the cat problem. <laughs> that's my daughter's cat, my daughter Finesse. She's 22 and she just got a cat. It's actually um, probably about six months old, I would say. And she named it Katniss because my daughter Finesse is crazy about Hunger Games. She's read all the books and she's dying for the other movie to come out here real soon. So anyway, back to crocheting. So now that we've done our last stitch, in order to uh, make your work get taller what you're going to do is you're going to wrap your yarn around once because we're only doing single crochets remember that picture I showed you you only chain one for a single crochet there's your chain one then you turn your work around and then you start again so you go right into that stitch before we were only working in in the um, top part of the V of the chain now, if you notice, I hope you can see this. It's kind of hard to see if I can get it to the camera. Now we're going to use both sides of the V. Okay, so we're going to go into there. And you see how I have both sides of the V? There's two strands. Going to go into there, yarn over, pull it through, 
there's your two loops yarn over and pull it through the two and there's your first single crochet of your second row and I meant to push my clicker on the first row and now that we just started our second row if you have a clicker push it again now you know you're on row two okay so in case someone comes and talks to you and you know that you want to do a certain amount of rows and you get confused you have to go back and count your stitches again get yourself a row counter it'll save a lot of frustrating time <laughs> okay so now we're on sec on row two and we're just going to do that all the way down till we get to the end of the row okay going to go through both sides of the V and then we're going to go through that go yarn over go through the two loops and we're just going to do this all the way till the end okay and then when you get to the end of that row again well, let me just do this whole row with you okay and then I'm going to show you something else and if you get confused and if you think it's too much information then just take in what you can right now and you'll have the information to go back and watch later rewind it and watch it later because the information I'm going to give you in a minute is going to be very helpful in case you don't have a counter. Um, I had to shoo my cat away again. No, no, Katniss, get away. Katniss, get down. Get down. Good girl. Oh, I'm sorry, little whiner. Okay. So let me finish this row with you before this cat goes crazy. My daughter's upstairs getting ready for work just started a new job so she's up there getting ready okay this is starting to curl on me okay so here we go we're almost at the end got two stitches to go and another thing that used to confuse me is I would I, I wouldn't know sometimes I wouldn't even know when the last stitch was because I don't know maybe it's just me but I'm sure you're a lot smarter than me but so here's my last stitch and then you do the same thing that I did before. You chain one, turn your work around and then don't forget your clicker, your row counter. Now you're on three. Okay, so you're going to do that until this is a square and it can be a coaster for you. That way you're not practicing for no reason. Um, you're actually going to end up making something. And if you need more practice after this, make a set of coasters, make five coasters, make ten until you've got the single crochet down and you've got the chain and how to hold the yarn and how to hold your hook. You know, make as many coasters as you need to. If you end up with too many, give them to friends, give them to family members. So I'm going to show you something that I think is very helpful, very, um, um, in case you don't have a counter. Okay, this was our chain. And in order to count rows, you see those, those little, they look like little dashes. Well, that's, count up to that, that's row one. And then you see that divot, so that's row one. That little divot is row two. There's the dashes again, row three, row four, row five, row six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, and 15. I stopped on that. So I made 15 rows. Um, you can make 16, that way it's a complete square, I guess. I mean, I don't know, I, this looked like a square to me, so I stopped at 15. So um, now that you know how to do this, you know how to do your single crochets, you know how to, at the end of the row, you know how to chain one and turn your work around and go back and forth, back and forth. Um, like I said, when you get there, chain one, turn your work around and go back the other way. And you're going to do that till you have 15 or 16 rows. And meet me back here when your square looks like this, okay? Or if you want to make a rectangle and make something else, then whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, I'll meet you back here when my pink um, project looks like this, okay? Have fun. Okay, I'm back. I've got one more stitch to do. And I went ahead and made 16 rows this time. Um, so to finish your project off, so now you're done. To finish your project off, you see the two loops right there? So that's not finished yet. That's, that's the end of that row. But to finish your project off, you chain one and then get your scissors and 
oh about mm, that long I'm not sure how long that is but about four or five inches Let's cut it off there and then now that you've cut it you can just pull the yarn through and then snug this down snug that little knot down and now it's nice and secure and there you go there's your little coaster and so now get your tapestry needle or yarn needle and we're going to weave in the edges or I'm sorry the tails all right so go ahead and thread your needle and what you're going to do so that you don't have you don't want to just cut that because then it could get it could get frayed or whatever so what I do is what most people do is we weave our ends in and so to weave your to weave my ends and you see those see those dashes that I was telling you I call them dashes those dashes I was telling you about well underneath the dashes there's two stitches see like little like little triangles or something so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in under those just right under the the those little stitches under the dashes if I can get it through there but you don't want to go all the way through so you're only going through the top layer okay and you're just going to weave it in I'm trying to not go through the end okay so you're going to weave it in don't pull too tight because you want to keep keep it square keep the project square so you can go as far as you want I'm going to go a little bit further okay so I'm going to go like that and then to secure it even more I'm going to go the other way don't go right back into that same one though skip a little area and then go into the next stitch and just weave it back the other way now you can go as far as you want with that too I'm going to stay there I'm going to stop there and now you can cut it I can grab my scissors my daughter hates that clock that's in the background, but I love it. I've always loved cuckoo clocks and clocks that tell you what time it is. If you don't have a watch, all you gotta do is listen for the little dings. Anyway, so you're done um, with that end, I'm, and then now you can go to the beginning where you made your um, where you made your slip knot and do the same thing. Um, thread up your uh, your yarn and then and then weave it in through there and then weave it back and then cut it off there and there's your coaster. <laughs> okay so I hope you've enjoyed this okay so the next tutorial we just learned how to do that the next one is going to be the the half double crochet did I say double crochet earlier I meant half double crochet so we're gonna learn how to do this so there's going to be um, at the end there's gonna be one two three four five maybe six because I'm gonna show you a slip stitch as well okay so there will probably be six tutorials to this series all right so hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully you'll meet me back here to learn more and don't forget practice 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 don't get frustrated um eventually you'll get the hang of holding the yarn you'll get the hang of holding the uh the hook at first you know your hands might get a little cramped because you're like tensed up and you're trying so hard but just relax take a breath and if you mess up, just pull it out and start over again. Make as many of these as you want. Um, if you want something different than just a bunch of coasters, then make more chains and then more rows and make yourself a pot holder. Okay? So anyway, um, thank you for watching my channel, Made With Love by Glamo. Don't forget to give my video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified for my next tutorial and share this um, channel with your friends and family. Um, the more subscribers, the more motivated I get to make more tutorials. All right, guys. Thank you for visiting Made With Love by Glamour, where everything here is made with love.